ever. Saturday marks an important day, really. It's your final game in football in, at management. How are you feeling? Yeah, quite uh, quite excited about it, really. I mean, uh, it's the right decision at the right time, and uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, quite happy with the, that decision which I made at the beginning of the year. Um, it was always sort of a plan uh, that I had when, when I brought Alex Sykes to the club, so uh, um, it'd be a, bit, a little bit emotional, I expect, but um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm sure the boys will have a few little surprises for you. So uh, possibly, after, yes. But you've, you've not got wind of anything yet. So. No, no, nothing. And, and uh, one bit of luck is Andy Hoskins can't make it Saturday, so that's probably saved my liver a little bit, perhaps. Before we go on to talk about your career, let's, let's just talk about this season at Shaw. Mm-hmm. It's been a... Has it been a season that's ex- exceeded expectations? Yeah, I think it has really, because you know we weren't sure about the squad, and uh, obviously uh, the budget is a little bit different from a couple of years ago when we had the FA Cup run. Um, but the spirit in the team was good from from day one, and apart from sort of like probably three games on the trot where we were under par, you know, all all, all season we we've been pretty pretty effective, and the run particularly since Christmas has been very good again, and. Uh, you know, we, we have actually taken points off some of the top sides, which is encouraging. Disappointing, really, that we, we lost a couple of points to sides that you know, we shouldn't have done. I mean, we should have beaten Marlow about 8-1 and ended up losing 2-1. They had two shots, which both went in right at the end, and that knocked us back a little bit. Otherwise, we might just have snuck into the playoffs. And also now with the points record as well, I mean, any other season you'd yeah, be yeah. nailed in for the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at these points in every year we would have been in this suddenly would have got us in the playoffs. And that's a testament to the top five sides who, who, who are the best five sides. You know, they've been consistent right the way through from start to finish. Um, so, uh, you know, that that's why it's been, been tougher this year, but... And it's been, as usual, with postponements and everything, it's been a really busy end of the season. Yeah, the yeah. The team I mean, have really done well in that short oh, period. I mean, I can't speak highly enough of uh, Alex and the team in terms of their commitment. Um, you know, we, we've, I don't know, we've had something like eight games in a fortnight, it seems like. And, uh, um, you know, in, uh, even in the last week, four, four games, you know. Uh, and uh, we got we finished with Winchester on Saturday, and if we can nick that one, that would be four wins out of four. You know, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. That's an incredible achievement. I mean, Sykes has juggled it around a little bit and managed the resources well, but you know, nearly all the lads have uh, have put a real shift in. I should imagine you and Sykes have sort of dovetailed quite well in the three. Yeah, it's been perfect. Yeah, I mean, I tried to get him earlier, and then he got the chance at Cleve. Uh, but you know, it was always my plan that uh, I, I would want uh, somebody who, who would, you know I know had the same values as myself to take over. And uh, you know, he's he's done more and more this year as I take more and more of a, a back step because obviously you know that's the right thing to have done. And he's a proper football man, um, very well respected by the lads and, and the people behind the scenes. So it's perfect. And of course, you've added Will Morford as well. He's going yeah. to step up and do well, more next season. That's absolutely brilliant because not only um, you know his coaching side of things, which he wants to get involved with, he's a proper good bloke, but he's a really, really good player too. Who could still be playing higher probably. And so you know him and Sykes, I think will be a, a perfect team. So brilliant. So next season you're going to be doing a watching brief. We've, we've all called it the Alex Ferguson side. Yeah, yeah. Side. So I, you're, you're confident that the team are going to do even better next season? Well, uh, yeah, you can never say never. You don't know what's going to come down or come up. I think Salisbury may be coming up. But uh, it, it, all I can say is the way the lads have finished is really encouraging. I mean, you can never say that you, know, you never know what's going to happen with injuries and things like that. But in terms of the, the squad and the potential in the squad, uh, I actually think Alex must be really excited about it, and I know I will be as a as a as a supporter. Yeah. yeah. At my age now, of course, I can remember you in your sort of early career as a, as a footballer. <coughs> probably first of all, my memories of you was probably Gloucester City mm. and mm. playing against Stuart Pearce. So that's one of the big standouts for me. So. Um, can you talk about your sort of early career in football? Yeah, I mean, I mean I've been so lucky. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, I came down to St Paul's College in Cheltenham uh, and, and stayed in Gloucestershire after that with my teaching jobs. I was lucky enough to play for some fantastic teams. I include Brimscombe in that, where I actually started with Andy Bish, who was a mate from college for a year. And then uh, Forest Green, where um, I absolutely loved my time there. And I did, I, you know, I did 
sort of quite well in terms of goal scoring. And Gloucester City were much higher then, and they came in for me. And uh, um, I did okay in the first, particularly two or three seasons there in terms of goal scoring. And then um, other managers came in, and I had to play different roles. So, um, and 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 the time at Gloucester was very varied. Sometimes we had quite good teams, but. Uh, other times we were always a little bit in the shadow of Cheltenham, which was a bit uh, disappointing, really. Uh, and I had seven years at Gloucester, and then I had a couple of years at Trowbridge in, in what's now the conference. And I loved that. I loved that football. I was getting on a bit then. I was in my 30s, but I really enjoyed it. And I played with some sort of quite special people. You never know who was going to come in at Trowbridge. We had Trevor Tate and the old Bristol City player. I played up front with an ex-Everton player, Bernie Wright, who was as hard as nails. Uh, and uh, Alan Birchnell was, uh, the, and he's, he's involved with Leicester now, so uh, he was involved with the, the managing side of things. So that was quite exciting. Then I had a year at Cheltenham, uh, and uh, that, that was probably uh, the only disappointment I had was that I didn't play at Cheltenham when I was a little bit younger and fitter. Um, I had a bit of knee trouble, and uh, I, 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 you know, to be fair to say, I, I struggled a bit at Cheltenham in that year. and. Uh, and then I um, I finished off again at uh, briefly at Forest Green under Steve Millard, uh, but then I had two years at Shortwood right at the end, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and we won the Hellenic League, and and from then it was into coaching and managing. So, uh, you know, that's what, for, as briefly as I can make it. Sorry, so I've been around most of the uh, of the clubs as you can see. When when you finished playing, was there was there a point where you thought, yes, I would like to be a coach, yes, I'd like to be a manager? Yeah, I mean, you're I, a PE teacher anyway. Yeah, yeah. The the coaching side came in because from the the younger side of things, really. Um, a fellow called Tony Passy, who was a senior coach in the county, uh, encouraged me to get involved with it, which I'm very thankful I did. I took me, you know, my my early coaching awards and then my uh, advanced coaching, and and I got involved with the Centre of Excellence, which was run by the Gloucestershire FA because Cheltenham weren't in the league then, so there was no there was no Centre of Excellence in the county. And that was brilliant. I enjoyed that. I worked with some really good players, um, but. Uh, it just happened really. Somebody um, came and asked me if I fancied being player manager at Brimscombe and I did that for two years and enjoyed that and, from, and it was to Forest Green uh, for the first time so uh, no budget to work with. Um, they were bottom of the league. They only had about six players of their own signed on when I arrived but some, some good fellas as well. Uh, Steve Doughty was there, John Relish, uh, John Macy, and we, we built it up. And I had two very happy seasons there, and then it, it went a little bit wrong, when, they, in my opinion, when they changed it to Stroud FC, and uh, I got sacked as Stroud FC manager. I'm proud I wasn't sacked as, as uh, Forest Green manager. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I went back playing then, I think, for a couple of years. Uh, but then uh, that was back at Shortwood. Um, and then Pat Casey and I took over Shortwood managing and coaching side of things and we were very set so that's all. we had a really good team then. I don't know what year it was, 92 I think, something like that. Um, and yeah, it just snowballed from there really. Yeah, and then you also had a spell as um, Slimbridge manager and turned yeah. them around really. Yeah, the, the, um, that was a strange one really because uh, Pat, Pat was supposedly going there as director of football. I was going to supposedly become manager but... They fair play. They stuck with Dougie Gray being the manager at the time, and you know I I did get them organised and became the coach, if you like, but sort of did the football side of things perhaps a little bit more. But um, yeah, it didn't quite work out in the end, and I thought that was it then. And then uh, uh, I had a year out just watching my boys play football um, and and doing what I wanted to do for a year, and I thought that that was it. I was getting promotions at school, so it fitted in quite well. But then Rich Webb rang me out of the blue, said he was coming back involved at Shortwood and he wanted me to go back as manager and I thought about it a little bit and then I had a go and I'm so glad I did because that's been a really happy, successful 11 years. Yeah, looking over your Shortwood career as a manager, what would be your sort of standout moments? Uh, the, uh, the, the standout moments got to be older shot away. I, I'd still bring hairs on the back of my neck when they're at the end of the uh, the match because we played them off the park second half we absolutely out footballed them and uh, we had a good team mine that was a good team um and you know no one expected us and uh, the whole of their crowd stayed behind and stood up and applauded our lads off which you know says something about a them as supporters 
and and b how well our, our fellas had done and you know the Port Vale game afterwards was exciting but that old I'll never forget that you know I was so proud of that that performance and and Sykes and I both earned our many a little bit at the half time to get the lads believing that they could go and turn it around we were 1-0 down again like we were in the first leg that whole season was just you know we were breaking records at every level I think we played more games than Arsenal who won the FA Cups I think we just played something like eight games of the FA Cup that year so it would be safe to say then really that Shawwood are the club that out of all your clubs is the one that's closest to your heart yeah because I've been there the longest I, I love my time at Forest Green um, uh, both as a player and, and most of the time as a manager, I, I just couldn't ever see the Stroud FC thing, uh, you know. And it, even now it hurts to see them not in the black and white stripes that, that I love playing in. Um, but, you know, I understand the reasons for that. Uh, but, yeah, Shortwood overall. And, and, and that's because of the people behind the scenes. There. I'm so fortunate with, with the... With my football and my cricket, I've found two clubs that just suit me, and I, I love them because of the the great people behind the scenes. Yeah. Family family clubs, you know. Their ethos is in a way quite similar. Aren't quite they? similar, yeah. yeah. You know, sort of uh, um, actually probably overachieving um, in terms of where they are ge geographically. Um, you know, with Shortwood up that hill with the single lane track. You know, in the same. Same uh, town as uh, uh, um, a conference side. I mean, it's amazing, really. And uh, okay, they're a little bit in the shadow of where Forest Green are, but I mean, to still have a team in the Southern League against big towns like you know um, Taunton and Tiverton, it's uh, you know, when we've done well against them, it's, it's, it's excellent. If I was to ask you your best moment as a football player, what would that be? Um, <laughs> I don't know. If that's a difficult one as a player. Um, I think probably it was being involved with uh, a five-all draw for Forest Green against Blythe Spartans, um, who were a top, top team at the time. I think only a couple of years later they got to the quarter-final of the FA Cup, the whole thing, and uh, um, that was a marvellous game. We were 4-1 down, and uh, the crowd was starting to go, because we had quite a big crowd that day. And uh, then we, we got back, and we, we were leading 5-4, and then unfortunately... Gave a penalty. We lost on penalties, but that was a hell of a hell of a game. That was um, so that that one probably yeah. yeah. And of course, not only football, cricket's been a huge part of your life. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You know, chairman now of Froster. And yeah, took yeah. Froster to Lords as a captain. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that... I've been very lucky, haven't I? And uh, you know, again, some happy times, and and you know. I was, Equally, uh, it's funny, in, in, at the end of a football season, I didn't ever want the football seasons to finish and I, I wasn't a great fan of cold cricket, but at the end of a cricket season, when it's hot and sunny, I wanted the cricket to carry on and didn't really, you know, pre-season training wasn't quite as attractive as still playing cricket, but, you know, that's a small price to play, so... Uh, and, of course, you're still, still playing cricket, you're playing yeah. for the Gloucestershire side, I won't say yeah. which age group... No, no, it's over 60s, Ash, I'm not good. <laughs> and we got to the semi-final of the Nationals last year and I still thoroughly enjoy the cricket and I still play for Froster in thirds and fourths and uh, you know being chairman is has become pretty full on now we're trying to raise money for a new pavilion and we're very very close to doing that so uh, yeah it's full on but uh, it just keeps you keeps you going and again Lord's final must have been the highlight does, oh, yeah. does that game still rankle with oh, you oh yeah yeah bit? yeah we still talk about it you know all of us can think of things that we did I mean God say I had 73 it's funny though because you know with with 2020 cricket that has changed totally people's perceptions of what a run chase is when I got out we still needed seven and over and at that time in the 1990s seven and over was still a tough ask even though we had quite a few wickets left but you know, we, 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 we regularly meet up and we talk about things, you know, me, because I, I you know, I probably sh shouldn't have got out when I got out, having got those runs. Ian Smith hit a six off the first ball and then, you know, got bowled off the second. And, and uh, you know, we, we all think about it. And, but it, it was just a brilliant occasion. And, it, you know, um, it... it I, I would have hated it if we got hammered there or if it had been rained off. Or I'd have rather had what happened losing by one run uh, and not had that experience because the whole experience was absolutely brilliant. They treated us royally and, uh, you know, it was fantastic. I think one of my standout moments was the Froster chance as well. Yeah, yeah. 
terrific support that. Oh, was, amazing yeah. from from teams that you know traditionally have hated us, <laughs> and uh, you know the, the local village teams that were out there supporting us, and that was that was fantastic. Yeah. And of course, Nick Trainers taking it on again. Yeah, so, yeah. That's oh, in Nick, safe hands, isn't it? Nick Nick's uh, been an excellent acquisition for us. I mean. Not just with his playing, but you know he's he's actually enabled local Gloucestershire players because the vast majority of them are still from from Gloucestershire. I mean it's not it's not as local as in my day, but the level's different. You, I mean you're competing against Bath and Bristol, and uh, you know amazing job really with with the uh, the youngsters who are coming through like Tom Wand who's who's come through the youth system and. Uh, you know, uh, Richie Cave and uh, the, these boys, you know, so it, it's good. Obviously, it's attracted other players now because of the level, which is the same as what's happened at Forest Green. The level means that people come in from further afield, don't they? Yeah. And of course, going, going back to your sort of teaching career, I know at one point you, you had a choice between turning professional football, I believe, mm. with Cardiff, yeah, yeah. and um, becoming a teacher, but at that time it was. Teaching. Yeah, well, I was already teaching, and um, I had my first boy on the way, and uh, um, I was 24, uh, and, and yeah, I'm not saying it was a complete offer that I had a trial, and uh, they, you know, we talked a bit about it, but uh, it was it's not really feasible, you know, because if I got injured, it was harder to get a teaching job then as well. And probably at that time, with the with the nature of professional football, it might have been okay if I'd made it and got into the first team. But if I wasn't, I'd probably been worse off than, and I couldn't risk it really. But you know, you, I was a late developer as well. I was quite a skinny kid at college. I went at five foot eight and ten stone ringing wet. Hard to believe now, I know. But there you go. Um, by the end of college, I was twelve and a half stone or five foot ten, and you know, a bit stronger and uh, a bit quicker. So yeah. But you look back and you think, oh, you know, that film sliding doors, you just, you know, because some people did go on and make it, but you never know. Yeah. And during your teaching and, and mm. PE career yeah. as yeah. well, you, you really nurtured some talent that went on and played at the highest level. Absolutely, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, even recently, um, young Ethan Moore, who was a real talent, um, he, you know, I'm, uh, it's great to see him back playing and, and, and involved and scoring goals after a few difficulties that he's had. So that's brilliant. But, you know, obviously Ian Olney, Mike Cook, um, several others, um, you know, uh, obviously the school's involved with Jack Russell. I didn't coach him at the school, but, you know, uh, fellow colleagues had done. And uh, I was involved with the county school's cricket with, with Jack. So, you know, I, I think Archway can be proud of, you know, some of the people they've produced in sport, yeah. So, I mean, I, I know you still like challenges. What, what does the future hold for you? Golf. Single figures, golf. Um, I've, got to, I've got to learn how to putt, though, Ash. I can't putt to save my life. I'm, I, I'm actually nervous at putting. And it's stupid, but uh, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the, the golfing challenge left. And uh, I still set myself a target of trying to score one century every year and see how long I can take that going. Um, I kept that going there, apart from the one year where I had my, my knee up. Um, I think I did sneak one in when I had the knee up just before, but uh, the following year I couldn't play. So, um, uh, you know, I've been lucky in that respect. And I know you're pretty keen on your cycling. I've, I've seen you do a half marathon because, well, yeah. I didn't see you, I saw you beat me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that again, though. It's not my knees won't stand it. That, that's the reason for cycling. It doesn't hurt your knees so much. And... Uh, you know, I carry a bit too much weight these days to uh, to do the plodding round the half marathon. But uh, yeah, I enjoy my cycling. Um, I don't look too closely at my results on Strava, but then I suppose I am 64, so <laughs> you know, uh, I suppose I'm still lucky to be getting out there, and getting up the hills. Okay, smashing. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank Ash, thanks very much.